Okay, David gave me the cue, so I guess we're live. Live coming at you from Bice Institute. Uh, thank you so much once again for coming and joining live to celebrate our 20-year Bice Institute anniversary. My goodness, every time I say that in every episode, I feel so old. <laughs> Seems like yesterday, but uh, I think next year it will be 28 years of practicing as a dentist. Can you believe that, right? Yeah. Uh, but once again, thank you so much. I know that in the evening after you work or wherever you are in the world, the time zone and everything, despite all that, counting and joining, it means the world to us. Thank you so much for all your support. Um, today is an episode number three. Okay, some of you guys are wondering what happened to the episode one, episode two. Uh, of course, uh, episode one was me, and then Dr. Jeff Lee was here last uh, week, uh, and and um, uh, 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 giving presentation for episode two. So some of you are missing those. There will be a chance to be able to watch that in the near future time. Okay, but anyways, episode three, we have a very very exciting guest once again. Uh, we have Dr. Sang Woo Ham. There you go. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, you guys all know Dr. Ham. Uh, Dr. Ham is one of our uh, main faculty member. Uh, he's one of the representing younger group of uh, Bice Institute, uh, whereas me and Dr. Jean and Albert Louis were the uh, senior. Uh, so the, Dr. Ham, he's the future. He's the leader of the future of our Bice Institute. So, uh, um, and Dr. Dr. Ham, most of you know, uh, he runs. Uh, uh, courses with us at the comprehensive plan residency. Uh, he also uh, does a treatment planning for the young resident doctors. Uh, and he will also uh, be running a workshop in February with Dr. Bernard Jin in a locator workshop as well. So he's one of the most active members of Bice Institute. And he's also one of the key opinion leaders for uh, MINEC, which is a megagen education arm. And he was also the, the, the finalist runner-up uh, at the uh, the Mega Mind um, uh, two years ago in, in Seoul, Korea. So uh, yeah, so he's been around. He's been around. So uh, I want to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Uh, um, Sang Woo Ham. Okay, everybody. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so Dr. Ham, um, uh, thank you so much for for coming today. Yeah, thank you for okay. having me. I know it's uh, it's a tiring, you know, full day of work. <laughs> I did. Right? Full day of work, and but thank you so much for coming and. Uh, uh, you know, helping us to celebrate together. It means a lot. Uh, you know, say hello to uh, the members, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's a, uh, it's, for some reason, when you're a YouTuber, I feel like become a YouTuber now. So I feel like <laughs> I should wear, you know, have a gimbal, you know, <laughs> doing all this. But, um, but welcome back to the Bites Institute's 20th uh, anniversary uh, seminar series. And I'm honored to be part of the third lineup after Jeff Lee. So it's a bit of a pressure because I know Jeff Lee and I've watched it. He's a great lecturer. He speaks very well. I speak very differently. So it's going to be a bit, it's a lot of pressure on me. But you know what? I'm just excited to be here because, you know, it's a Vice Institute. Mm -hmm. We're about, it's not about just learning anything, but it's about being together, sharing, and having the experience together yeah. and, you know, spending time together and growing together. So I'm very excited. I'm very honored. And you know what? It's going to be a fun time tonight. I'm just wondering, uh, Dr. Ham, like, uh, I think you've been with us almost five years now, the Bice Institute? Uh, teaching is around five years. Five years? Yeah, and, but then I started learning Bites eight years ago. Eight years ago, so it's a total, total of uh, three years of learning, and then five plus more years of learning, along with lecturing as well with Bites. So. How, what, what was your um, uh, motive, or how did you find about Bice Institute? It's interesting, right? Like so, um, Dr. Bernard Jin was, was when I first started. It was he, I was his associate, you mm -hmm. know, learned, and then um, I was just doing general dentistry. Believe it or not, I never wanted to do surgery. I want. I hated blood. I hate seeing people, you know, for taking teeth out. And one day, Dr. Jin just recommended coming to his workshop. You know, it's a PRF and a traumatic extraction workshop, and it's uh, I attended it just so that I can do better and. One day I started realizing I'm taking all the bites courses. It's mm -hmm. um, you know it was it's not about it wasn't really the fact that I was interested in doing surgery or doing implants, but it's the experience and the knowledge that we share and growing mm -hmm. together that I liked about bites. And it's, uh, and after learning a few years and then learning implants and surgery, I started doing a little more. But as you probably know, in the beginning I wasn't that great of a surgeon because I was never interested. Mm -hmm. And then after a few years of putting my effort into it, trying to do better, not because I want to be a better surgeon, but be a better dentist, mm -hmm. I started becoming better. And then 
fortunately, I had the opportunity from you and Dr. Jin mm -hmm. to become part of Bites Institute mm -hmm. and help out a little more. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that because it's not just being a faculty member, but also growing as a clinician mm -hmm. by being a faculty member and learning more and doing a better dentistry. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so again, through Dr. Jin, I found out Bites Institute, mm -hmm. but I find I start to learn more about Bites by being involved into it. Mm -hmm. I, w tell me a little bit. A lot of uh, our members know you as Dr. Sang Ham, um, but I don't think many members really know your upbringing. Uh, <laughs> were you born in Canada? I think you were born in Korea, right? Yeah. Tell um, us a little bit about that. Uh, I have an interesting, I guess, in a way, interesting perspective. So I was born in Seoul, Korea. Um, I immigrated to Canada when I was in grade five. Uh, without knowing any English. <laughs> I didn't even know alphabets, you know. I we came to Canada and I thought it was traveling, but I never went back. <laughs> so ended up staying here. So it's I I immigrated grade five and it's grew up in Vancouver the whole time. And as a matter of fact, it's a it's a small city called Coquitlam. And then I grew up there, I went to school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and university to University of British Columbia, which is again Vancouver. And then I went I'm went back to my city and I'm practicing in, my, in the city that I've been grown up to. So it's a, uh, and then, <coughs> sorry, just a bit of a water. Mm. A little dry throat today. Mm. So you were always in the West Coast Vancouver. <laughs> always West Coast yeah. Vancouver. Um, did you go to the university elsewhere? No, or just, all, UBC, all just UBC all here. Uh -huh. um, it's interesting because uh, I didn't want to be a dentist. I actually want to be a teacher, mm. a high school teacher. And then um, my mother was telling me that because my aunts and uncles are all dentists and doctors, so you should consider being a doctor. And I said, oh, okay, why not? I'll give it a try. But medical doctor took so many years because you do four years of school and, you know, all that. So shorter one was the dentistry. So I chose dentistry. Mm -hmm. It was just, it's just a, it was a, it was a process of elimination, of it, if anything. Mm -hmm. And then at university, I special, I, I, my major was in pharmacology honors. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated pharmacology, went to dentistry. Um, I did consider going to a different school for dentistry. I wanted to apply for a different school, mm. um, like Toronto. So you did undergrad in UBC? I did undergrad in UBC, UBC, but then I yeah. wanted to apply for Toronto and all that. But my girlfriend at the time, mm. who happens to be my wife at the moment. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. I was almost thinking, like, you know, if this gets aired, okay, you know, where, where do we draw the line, right? I'm glad it's the same. Same, you know, who, it's yeah, the yeah. same person, the same girlfriend from undergrad, dentistry and all. She did not want to do long distance, so she did not allow me to apply to any other school. So I applied to UBC only and then I got in. And I did the undergrad in UBC uh, and I wanted to specialize eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I did apply to University of Pennsylvania for specialty for ortho perio. That's right, UPenn, UPenn, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did get accepted, but it then the tuition was too high. So instead of going right away, I decided to withdraw and then just, you know, pay off loan and then, um, you know, eventually go back to orthodontics. As I said, I didn't want to be a surgeon. So mm -hmm. orthodontic was the closest thing that I could mm -hmm. think of. So all I do is chat, yeah. think about it, put brackets. I don't have to see blood. I don't have to take teeth yeah. out. Yeah. So I wanted to be orthodontist. And then as I started working, I was started working with Dr. Jin, and fast forward nine, nine years, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you still think about going back and doing ortho? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, my life has evolved enough that I don't miss guy will go back to ortho. But you know, it's uh, it's it's interesting how things change. Yeah. Being, being a person who wanted to be a high school teacher, yeah. being a became a dentist and who didn't want to do surgery, who wanted to be an orthodontist, ended up doing implants and yeah. surgeries, and then. Um, yeah, here I am. And I never thought I'll be teaching again and I'm part of the Bites and be able to share. It's a great opportunity. I'm very grateful for all those uh, times that I can spend in Bites Institute to meet a lot of great people because by the opportunity that Dr. Kwan and Dr. Jin offered me, I was able to meet a lot of great people, not just local, but internationally as well. And it was, you know, it's very, I'm very grateful of those experiences and opportunities. And I think talking about ortho, I don't know um, many of uh, uh, Bites Institute, begin members know, but there was a time, a few year period of my career, early career, that I was doing half of my practice was ortho and half was implant. So uh, I was doing implant two days a week. I was doing ortho two days a week. And I was doing one day general dentistry. And I had to choose. 
and I almost chose ortho. <laughs> almost. <laughs> So if I did, Bison Institute would be Bison Institute Orthodontic Training Center. <laughs> just, just think about that for a second. Just think about that, huh? You know, actually, I, I'll, let me share a story <laughs> that I forgot to tell anybody in Bites. Um, so at UBC, there is an exchange program for professors to have a visiting professor to teach orthodontics. And I'm sure there is for other departments, too. But one of the professed clinical instructors or professors was from Kyungbuk University, mm -hmm. which is from Korea. Yeah. It's funny because... Um, when I followed up to meet him with him after I graduated, mm. he works in a clinic called Mirror Clinic. Mm. Mm. And I mean, you may have heard of that clinic. Mm. He works with Dr. PKB yeah, in yeah. the same Dr. clinic. Dr. Park, Dr. Park. Yeah, yeah. so I yeah. was like, wow, so you work with Dr. Park, yeah. and the, somehow the world comes around to see me you again, you know? It's a small so, world. So it's such a small world. My orthodontic instructor was like, I thought you were going to be an orthodontist. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I do titanium orthodontics. <laughs> someday, someday. That's great. Um, so, Dr. Ham, I know you have a presentation that prepared for us uh, for tonight. Tell us a little bit about the topic. I think the topic is on the locator. Immediate right? locators. Yeah, I, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, you start to have a more focus on the locator. You kind of uh, find your new passion in plant dentistry mm -hmm. in a locator over denture and how it profoundly um, impact your patient pool, right? Uh, like as a general dentist who not only do great implant dentistry, but also you know, do great general dentistry, uh, practice unlimited, uh, you know, give us your thoughts on this little topic and what inspired you to present this for tonight as a special lecture of topic. You know, um, like it's nice to see Dr. Kwan's like FP1s and a lot of people like showing off full arches, but for me as a general practitioner, I don't just see full arches or people who are wanting implants, but we all see people with root canals, bridges. But sometimes I realize that there are patients who need full arch treatment, but cannot do full arch mm -hmm. fixed prosthetics. Like, let's be real, not all patients can handle fixed bridges mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sometimes their oral hygiene or dexterity is compromised mm -hmm. and makes it difficult for them to clean. And sometimes patients just want relief from the pain of removal prosthetics. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know why, but just before starting COVID and um, mm -hmm. going into COVID and until now, mm -hmm. I'm starting to have more patients who are wanting some improvements for removal prosthetics. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, and this, these are typically elderly patients mm -hmm. who seeking for help to mm -hmm. have a better quality of life and or oral quality of life. Mm -hmm. And suggesting immediate locators, they were also not, because there are, there are more age groups of 70 and above, mm -hmm. and they wanting treatment, the benefit of treatment sooner. Not mm -hmm. because they want to rush anything, it's just that they feel, at least from my what patients tell me, they want to benefit from treatment sooner mm -hmm. so that they can have a better life mm -hmm. of their, their lives. Mm -hmm. And immediate locator has been very impactful for mm. our patient, and they find an immediate improvement. Of course, there is some degree of pain because it is a surgery, mm. but the satisfaction and mm. the improvements in their quality of life, and how I, every time I meet them for follow up, it really improve. I can see the improvements mm. in the mm. patient's life and mm. patient's expression mm. and their gestures. And the more, as I do them, because the patients do talk to each other mm. who are in a similar stage, I start to see more patients. Mm. And I find that it's very, I, I'm very grateful that I learned mm. from you and Dr. Jin and how to do kind of trip mm. procedures. Mm. At the same time, thankful that I have the ability mm. to do something better for mm. my patients. And I, today's lecture is more focusing on that aspect of how I find that it's satisfactory and allows me to do a dentistry that is impactful in a positive mm. aspect for patients' mm. quality of life mm. and how it can make it your practice enjoyable, mm. meaning what we can do to make it successful, how, mm. what are we trying to achieve so that the follow-ups and the, the bu building practice is, is what we call, what I would say, it comes in a package. Mm. Your satisfaction as a clinician, mm -hmm. your patient satisfaction from a treatment plan, mm. and also as as a presenter, looking mm -hmm. at the outcome, mm -hmm. and it's a, I think it's a good trio, mm -hmm. and it's a good, if you're interested in becoming a more of a surgeon, I think it's a great armamentarium mm -hmm. in your toolbox, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm here to share today. Mm -hmm. Well, no further ado, I know a lot of you guys signed up for the presentation, okay, so no further ado, uh, Dr. Sang-woo-ham presents you 
the topic, uh, the key to successful immediate locator. Here we go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Sang Woo Ham. Before I begin, I would like to congratulate Bites Institute for marking its 20th anniversary this year. Under the leadership of senior faculties Drs. Mark Kwan, Bernard Jin, and Albert Louis, many of us have witnessed what the excellence and advancement in implant education that Bites Institute has offered. And I do not doubt that Bites Institute will continue to do so. As a matter of fact, I am one of those who have significantly benefited from the, what Bice Institute has offered, and I invite many of you to join and grow together with me. I am honored to be invited to be a part of this 20th anniversary online live conference and share my experiences with many of you joining me today. I'm sure many of us have experience with some sort of overdentures, and some of us may have already have experience with implant overdentures. We know that many patients who are completely edentulous benefit significantly from implant overdentures, especially in the mandible. In ma we also know that traditional workflow is quite cumbersome. Let's review the traditional workflow. First, we remove all the teeth and graft and give patient an immediate denture. Then, we after four months to six months of healing, we place implants and we wait again. Once that's healed, we expose, and then we can make the implant overture after of almost to a year since the start of the treatment. Imagine the number of relines and a follow-up points you have to do to make this treatment successful. And how satisfied are we with the immediate, implant, immediate denture at the first try? How about after multiple relines? And how satisfied are patients with those dentures? Or is it just me who have difficulties with these immediate dentures? Let's just imagine, what if we can immediately load these dentures to the implants? What if we could do so in a consistent and predictable and successful manner? Wouldn't that make our experiences much better? Wouldn't our patients benefit significantly and have a positive experience through this treatment? And most importantly, wouldn't our patient benefit in their lives with these kind of treatment modalities. Well, that leads to my today's presentation, an overview of case selection and workflow of immediate loading of implant overdentures. Just to share a story of mine, implantology is one of the reasons why I love dentistry. Through dentistry and through implantology, we as healthcare professionals have the capability and the knowledge to impact patients' quality of life. Therefore, I always strive to do the best for my patient, and that is why I devoted my clinical practice to predominantly implant surgery and oral surgery, with the great team that I have that I work with in my clinical practice. I also feel very fortunate to be able to connect with talented clinicians through Bites Institute and other educational programs because these opportunities help me become a better clinician and do better treatment for my patients. When we discuss immediate loading treatment for terminal dentitions, we often refer to all on X treatment for in general. And yes, with currently available digital technology like R2Gate, we're capable of providing state-of-the-art solution to our patients like Dr. Mark Kwan's FP1 zero bone reduction full arch therapy concept. However, there are still barriers for these patients from receiving such treatment and those include financial factors and patients' capability of maintaining good oral hygiene. We all know that fixed prosthesis solution is not for every patient, and for those specific patients, sometimes removal prosthesis is a better long-term solution. Then the question is, can we predictably immediately load the overdentures to our, to our removal prosthesis? When I first learned implantology and the concept of cross arch stabilization for full arch therapy, fixed splinting of multiple implants was one of the key criteria for successful outcome. For example, this review particle from Journal of Prosthetics suggests that cross arch stabilization by splinting full arch minimizes micromotions 
and stimulate bone growth. In other words, dent removable prosthesis and immediate implant did not go well to hand to hand. But that's now the past. What does the current literature say about this concept? As may, you, many of you may guess, the literature, current literatures do suggest the high predictability of immediate implant therapy for implant overdentures and the mandible. In fact, my colleagues and I from Bice Institute have performed hundreds of immediate loading of implant overdentures for over a decade, and we now have a predictable protocol that we follow that gives high success rate. The general protocol often do suggest a bone reduction to achieve high primary stability by circumferentially surrounding the implant fixture with basal bone. But that's not the picture, the whole picture, is it? For a clinician to successfully complete a treatment on a consistent basis, one must establish proper case selection protocol and employ an efficient clinical workflow. And today, I am here to share some of my insights and clinical decisions that I make for my clinical cases of immediate loading of implant overdentures to make it consistently successful. So who is a good candidate for implant overdentures? Theoretically, anyone who is interested in this kind of treatment modality. But in my clinical practice, patients who often end up with immediate implant overdentures are those who seek full arch treatment but have short or long-term risk factors, including compromised oral hygiene or limited finance, as I alluded earlier. Compared to fixed prosthesis, removable implant prosthesis allow patients to have, with compromised oral hygiene, like for example, compromised dexterity, to have an easier daily maintenance protocol for their implants. And for those patients who have limited finance but are hoping to have it convert into fixed prosthesis in the future, Implant overdenture is a great interim treatment for improved function and comfort with less financial burden. And of course, for as a definitive treatment, this is a great treatment modality too. Now, without further ado, let's talk about the protocol that I find predictable in my clinical practice. From my perspective, there are a few goals that I try to achieve in immediate implant overdentures, and those include Four implants, not two, but four implants with minimum insertion torque of seven, 40 new centimeters with ISQ value over 70. And when I say ISQ value, that's the insertion ISQ value at the time of the surgery. Also, sufficient existing or planned vestibular depth with minimal, minimum keratinized and attached gingiva of two millimeters around the implant fixture. Last but not least, the prosthetic should have sufficient prosthetic space to allow the teeth, the gingiva, and locator housing. And that should be pre-planned before even you touch the patient. Now, let me share a case that shows the overview and how I execute these kind of cases and share the, the techniques that I utilize to make it work. Here's a patient, 62-year-old male, heavy smoker and heavy drinker, otherwise healthy. As the panoramic radiograph suggests, the patient presented with generalized periodontitis and generalized tooth mobility. He came to me for a consultation regarding full arch solution for his upper and lower arch. However, the patient's financial status did not allow for fixed solutions yet. So we decided to proceed with a removable prosthesis for now, building up to the fixed solution in the future. So here is the R2 gate planning of the case. You may recognize the planning that follows FP2 design of the lower arch. I like to plan my implant position for removal prosthesis following FP2 design because it allows me to have the flexibility to convert into fixed arch solution in the future without any compromise and without using multiple uh, MUA, multi-unit abutments. Therefore, so I can use a direct fixed into the fixture prosthesis for full arch solution instead of using an MUA which can contribute to plaque accumulation in the future. And this is where the digital dentistry shines because by utilizing digital dentistry, I can angulate and position the implant so that it satisfies both removable and fixed solution in the future without any compromise. 
In other words, we can precisely and accurately position implant fixtures so to adequately support future prosthetics according to the occlusal scheme that you have designed without any compromise. And also with the given angular correction that Zest Locator can provide, which is up to 40 degrees if you want to, the angular deviation that is inevitable, uh, inevitable with the implant fixture positioning becomes insignificant. And in this case, I have not planned to do any bone reduction because the vertical bone loss from the periodontal disease fortunately turned out in my favor. Therefore, I decided to perform guided bone regeneration to increase the horizontal width with fixture emplacement for implant overdention and for future fixed prosthetics. So here is the immediate post-op and the radiograph of the case. Four fixture has been placed with insert, minimum insertion of 40 new centimeters, but at the same time, I try to take an ISQ uh, value, but in this case, because the blue diamond system that I utilized in this case was relatively new, the ISQ pegs were not available. So in this case, I was not able to take ISQ, but if I did, I probably got 70 and over. And you also may notice that the above and locators are relatively longer than usual. And these are four and three millimeter height locator abutments. I generally like to apply zero bone loss concept for all my cases. And therefore, the fixtures that are here, I have placed approximately four and a half millimeter subgingival, which necessitates the use of longer abutments. And typically, it ends up being a four millimeter uh, locator abutment. Of course, all extraction sites were grafted and guided bone regeneration was completed around the implant fixtures where there's been significant bone loss. Zest locators were utilized to, and picked up with his new immediate lower denture, and the denture was given to the patient to be loaded the same day. Of course, PRF, plain and rich fibrin, was utilized as a part of bone grafting. Now you may wonder what is the benefit of immediately loading locator overdentures? Immediate loading of low ocular overdenture had many advantages. First, soft tissue healing is unbelievable. You can see the excellent healing at two week mark of another case of mine and one month post-op as well. The excellent soft tissue is incomparable with any other treatment, maybe other than the fixed solution. And also the immediate uh, comfort and the functionality the patient achieves from this immediate loading is a significant improvement. And of course, the hygiene is also simple. After two weeks, patient can take it out and clean it every day, which makes this treatment modality very favorable to those especially with compromised oral hygiene because they can clean the implants very, very well. And of course, that retention is very satisfactory over conventional immediate located denture, immediate denture. So the what is the steps after fixture placement in order to get these kind of results? So after insertion of the implants, we must be, also we should be doing bone reduction as necessary. We need to pick up the implant fixtures with the locator housing accurately, meaning you need to make sure that the housing is in and picked up at the same time. And there is a specific protocol so that we can pick it up at the same time with precision. And of course, the material that we use to pick up the locator housing is, could be any material of your choice, but personally, I use a product called QuickUp because it works quickly and it's hard enough for me to pick up and also easy to adjust. And of course, after the venture is delivered and polished, I give it to the patient and tell them not to remove for two weeks. Not one, not 10 days, but two weeks because we find that two weeks is a key magic time for the soft tissue to heal very, very well. So here is the one month follow-up and the two month follow-up of the case that we just did, showed you. You can see the overall good soft tissue healing around the fixtures. And two with Mark, there's two things that I recommend or that I tend to do for each cases. Not every single time, but in many cases. First, I look at the this sleeves, the sleeves within the housing. If the black housing is worn out, I change to a higher retention sleeve so that it'll be stronger and better retention. And sometimes I have to realign the case if the bone um, remodeling is significant. And the case that we did today, all I had to do was a little bit of realigning, but otherwise it was quite looking good, as you can see in the photo there. 
Now here is the four month follow up. You can see the panoramic radiograph that there is a good maintenance of the in, 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 uh, bone around the implant fixtures. I don't often do this, but I did remove the locator housings and locator abutments to measure the ISK and all of them were above 75. And of course, and after four months, I always recommend, I always do fabricate new final dentures with or without re reinforcements, depending on the occlusion. If the denture, the lower denture is against a natural dentition or very strong bruxism, I often recommend having either metal or fiber reinforcement within the denture for increased strength. But in cases like this, where it's just against a regular denture, that is not necessary. <clears throat> now here's the one year follow up of photograph and a radiograph. You can still observe the adequate soft tissue healing around the blood fixture and the bone maintenance around the fixture on the panoramic radiograph. And also the prosthetic is still functioning very well and sturdy. And patient is now ready and is planned to be converted to the fixed prosthesis in the future when his financial is ready, just like how Dr. Kwan does FP1 design for his full arch treatment. Now you may wonder why do I do these sometimes risky treatment or why I do these immediate loading that may seem risky. One famous person said that people don't buy what you do, but they buy why you do it. I do implants because I know how impactful I can be to my patients through implants and giving them a second chance with their teeth. And patients find that valuable to them and that's why they come to me and to me respecting that trust that the patient has in me is important by giving them everything I got doing everything I can and utilizing every tool I have in order to give them the result that they deserve or if not better and that is why I do these treatments and try to provide do something better for patient every day now, you may say immediate loading of located engine may have been around for over a decade. Is there anything better that you think that's coming in the future? And yes, just as the keep as a just as the peaks uh, just a peek into our future, this whole process can be completely digitized and executed digitally with high precision and predictability. And I am looking forward to share that with you in the near future as well. I hope you enjoyed my presentation today. I hope you learned something today. I try to share, give you a good overview of the immediate locator denture and what I do in my clinical practice. And I hope you'll be joining me when I do and share my digital workflow immediate locator denture in the near future. Thank you very much and have a great day. Wow, thank you. You were just outside lecturing. You just came here so fast. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Ham, for uh, sharing the brief but concise but impactful presentation on the ever um, useful and evolving topic, locator over denture. Um, you know, like, I know you give me a lot of credit for coming up with this concept. Uh, many years ago um, and but of course um, like always the best thing is to see the student do better than the the teacher right and that's how I feel about how you're doing it and, and, and those cases look wonderful uh, some of the the members were asking though like uh, two versus four <laughs> two versus four you know you show your case was four can you do one too? Um, Would you recommend it too? I think if we need to. I rather classify three instead of two, actually. Okay. So, so we have two implants, and we have four implants interforamina, yeah. and four implants AP, with AP spread. Mm -hmm. I think we should distinguish, distinguish those three mm -hmm. because the the la the first two, which is the two implants and the interforamina, is an RP five, which is removal mm -hmm. prosthetic five, mm -hmm. and RP4 for the uh, with the more AP spread. Mm -hmm. To me, at least literature say two also works as well. But then patient satisfaction for 
locator specific mm -hmm. with two implants is far lower than four because two locators do have more rotational movement than a four. Let's say if you do a bar, but if you do a bar, there's no such thing as immediate because you have to take an impression and then get it away. For locator specifically, I think it's not a good option for treatment outcome. I'd rather, like, if it's the finest people talking about, I'd rather get, I, I charge the patient to say two or four, it doesn't really matter. I'd rather give them a four to get a better stability by giving a trapezoidal stability rather than two where there's a hinge for it to rotate around. So have I tried to? No, I don't give them an option. Um, but to me, overall patient satisfaction, mm. even people with who had two, because I did do two locator implants for certain patients who requested two in the beginning, and his, some those patients say they are happier, but they still do say locator do move around. And you end up having the sleeves, you have to change the sleeve more frequently, yeah. and um, the retention is not as good, it still flips up. So to me, if you want that quality work as an outcome, mm -hmm. four is definitely recommended. And if possible, rather than interforamina, meaning between the two mental foramens, yeah. but two on the back, two on the front. Like, um, I agree, because in, in our uh, at Chrysalis, at my clinic, we don't give two options. <laughs> we stopped giving two options 15 years ago. Uh, I stopped doing two because we have a one fee structure for locator option. We only have a category, category one, immediate loading, category two, delayed loading. Um, and immediate loading, we charge a little extra because you're doing a pickup twice, mm -hmm. you know, at the surgery day and for the final. We always, uh, like you said, we quote uh, transitional denture and final denture, mm -hmm. right? But um, when, when a patient asks, can I get two? Uh, you can get two, same price. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Okay, don't get four. <laughs> right? um, yeah, if there's a space, I, I would much prefer to put good four. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, even really resorbed ridges, uh, if I can locate the foramen, if we can put four, I find that far more stable, far more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, in a case of a, a, a locator, what do you think for the general dentist the hardest part is what what aspect of uh, locator in, like not just even just the immediate but locator because I know you'll be teaching a locator course mm. in, a, in a, a couple months right what is a part that a lot of our general dentists have a hard time incorporating locator as a part of the, the practice builder instead of saying general dentist I'll share my yeah. difficulty I think that's a probably more relatable yeah. um, there, I think there is three parts to difficulty for a general practitioner, not a, um, not a specialty clinic. Number one is getting the surgical part of learning the full arch treatment, where um, some of you who do full arch treatment I probably know full arch treatment, implant treatment is a whole different ball game than a single implant mm -hmm. all, all together. And biggest part is landmarks and making sure that implant goes in. Cause what ends up, when you start losing full and full arch, you start losing orientation. So as a, as a dentist who may not be doing as many, looking into locator in general, not only immediate, mm -hmm. placing implants in where you want is probably the most difficult. Like mm -hmm. realistically speaking, if you put four somewhere, it can work. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we're as me as clinician, I'm trying to place an implant in a specific location, mm -hmm. not just where the bone is so that patient still has option to move up. Because if we just place implant where the bone is, mm -hmm. when they try to move up to a fixed prosthetic, we often have to utilize multi-unit abutments and a different platform. Mm -hmm. And prosthetic is not reverse engineered, but you're kind of forcing the prosthetic to fit in. So for me, um, that adds a little more difficulty mm -hmm. on that. Latin, next part is the prosthetic because mm -hmm. getting the vertical dimension of the occlusion because denture oh, is sure. a different perspective yeah. than a fixed prosthetics where fixed prosthetic we can get away sometimes with utilization of zirconia personal hybrid with a titanium abutment which requires far less restorative space than a denture and because locator over denture and if you're using a bar that's a whole different level mm -hmm. um, where you have to have a locator abutment height housing height and acrylic oak that surrounds it and plus acrylic that holds the teeth mm -hmm. which is a quite significant amount of space mm -hmm. and 
if you don't calculate or take that into consideration before your surgery, because before digital, that was the hardest part for me where I kind of eyeballed video because mm. people lost video, trying to open, wax trying, uh, try great. Yeah, wax trying is great perspective, but at the same time, now you have to take into consideration a bone reduction if necessary. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, by utilizing digital, that process became more predictable. Mm -hmm. And that was, again, getting understanding the prosthetic aspect was difficult. Mm -hmm. But last will be the implementation. So doing a one locator a year mm -hmm. does not get you proficient. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, in fact, it could be a discouraging aspect mm -hmm. of the treatment. So trying to put yourself out there, try and seek, allowing the patient, people to know that you offer these kind of treatments so that you'll be more proficient, so that you'll be more efficient doing the surgery and the providing treatment. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I'm sure you do it much faster than I did, but my locator surgery, I don't keep, I don't keep it longer than an hour and a half or two. Mm -hmm. I, I have to finish it that time. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to be like fast or anything, it's that the longer the surgery, the patient's more pain. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, earlier, Patients are elderly patients mm -hmm. typically, so they can't stay for too mm -hmm. long. So okay. it's yeah. uh, so implementation parts also was difficult. Mm -hmm. It was a learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. So that's how I see it. Like for example, my first surgery was like five out, five seven hours, mm -hmm. including conversion. Mm -hmm. Like that's painful. Mm -hmm. Now for both I, you and the patient, every, more yeah. more so for the patient. Mm -hmm. um, but then now I try to keep the surgery in within two hours mm -hmm. and then conversion try to keep it in 30 minutes mm -hmm. or so so that patients can go home yeah. and do you sedate the patient sorry do you um, sedate the patient do you see it necessary i try not to yeah uh, i'm not a big fan of sedation mm. in cases like this because mm. the bite is extremely important because mm. um, for, pro for proper protocol for picking mm. up the locator housing in the uh, patient's mouth when they're sedated, it's very oh, difficult. Yeah. It's impossible. So it's uh, so I try to if wake I, up, wake <laughs> up. <laughs> but for yeah. me, it's like I want to make sure that they are very minimally sedated, if yeah. not, if if at best, and then so that I can get the the, the bite properly. So that's the biggest part. I always say like I know a lot of uh, I will be launching our full arch uh, mastership in next year September by. I, I always encourage this doctor who wants to take the the high level FP1. The gateway is is the locator. You know, I always tell them because surgery we can teach them, um, but the occlusion, getting the catching the right bite, you know, proper joint position and all that, that's very very essential. And our Dr. Albert Louis always talks about you know like how important for the occlusion, 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 occlusion. Uh, you know, we jokingly say, but in many ways, I mean it. Mm -hmm. The one that who rules the occlusion rules the universe, you know? Um, and that's the part that when I do get in any trouble, whether it's an overdenture case of mine or FP1 case of mine, mm -hmm. the, the case I, I get in trouble is one that I didn't get the correct occlusion, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very, very important. Um, so I, I definitely, definitely would... Um, how you uh, recommend getting into as a locator as your first gateway to your full arch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anything else? Oh, tell me a little bit um, about your family. You know, oh. every time I see a slide at the end, I see a beautiful <laughs> family. But you don't you don't really talk much of, right? <laughs> you got two boys, I know that, right? Okay, tell me a little bit. Um, it's, I know uh, you're a proud <laughs> father. I know you. I, I know you are. I get. I get a little bit shy with my yeah. introducing my family, but um, well, as I as I said earlier today, um, my girlfriend at the time when I was applying dental school is my yeah. wife right now. Um, I dated her since my year one in college, yeah. and then um, so I kind of last yesterday with my wife. I did you marry her during the school year? Uh, as soon as I graduated dental school, oh, okay. so the so it's the, the the timeline is I first year I they started dating her, and then the the day I finished dental school, I think a week later was my wedding day, ah. and then we went honeymoon and came back. So I think this year marks 
sep- almost seven, 16 years of yeah. being together now. Like, I'm 35. Yeah. <laughs> so, so your wife uh, loves you enough to uh, marry a, a dentist broke. Yeah. yeah like, like, yeah, broke and in debt. So my wife yeah. was telling me one day, like, I thought marrying a dentist was missing... That I'll be, I'll be a like you know trophy wife, and yeah. I said, and she was like, "It's not a trophy wife. You're a trophy. You're a trophy. You can be a trophy husband. I'm nothing. Like yeah. I thought. Like you have all debt and everything. Yeah. What is going on? Yeah. And you know, there's an old saying in Korea. You know, when you marry a woman, you say, "I'll make sure that you won't touch a single drop of water on your yeah. head." <laughs> Meaning, and and then you don't have to work. You know, all that things. That when my wife says, "You're a big liar," <laughs> but it's, uh, and I have two boys. Um, and then I so she was. She was, uh, what is it, generous enough to marry me and have two kids with me. Uh, beautiful she, kids, it's, yeah. uh, One is a six-year-old now and the other one's a one-year-old. Um, they're a handful. Uh, they're, they're, uh, I try to take them everywhere. Like whenever I lecture or whenever I go on a trip, I try yeah. to take them, at least one of them with yeah. me. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, they're, they're a big part of my life. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, uh, my, my son doesn't really know what I do, but yeah. it, he knows I'm a dentist, yeah. but then I, uh, he thinks I just poke around the teeth, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's, great. that's my family. That's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dr. Albert Lewis said uh, uh, he finds the locator often harder to place than all on X. And I agree with you, Dr. Albert Lewis, because when we used to do an all on X, we have multi unit bombment to bail us through, <laughs> right? And one of the hardest thing for us, pers- me, for me personally, five years ago, when I started to really dive into FP1, is when I realized, when I tried to put implants so straight, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And I realized how difficult, even for me, with that many years of uh, experience, to put implant exactly where I wanted to. Like you said, the reference point is gone. That's why I use guide. <laughs> That's why I use guide. Okay, uh, because you know you have to. You don't have a multi unit to bail yourself out. So that, that's why. That's why I, I totally agree. Um, Dr. Sang Wham, last uh, uh, question before we uh, thank the audience and say goodbye. This is twenty years of Bice Institute, as you know, mm-hmm. and I know that you've been with us uh, as an active faculty for five years, mm-hmm. but we've been in in motion. 15 years even before that. Mm-hmm. Um, Bice Institute, it means different to a lot of different faculty. Like mm-hmm. for me, you know, it's like like my child, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, 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 it's a really a, a, a start with something small, little passion. And I am very grateful for it. And without Bice Institute, I would have never met Dr. Bernard Jin, Dr. Albert Louis, um, you, right? And uh, so for you, though, it might be different. You know, what it is a is Bice different. Institute mean to you? <laughs> yeah. In short um, words, yeah, short words. That's a. Uh, um, it might be a little cheesy too, but um, you know, whenever I go speak or say to people or introduce myself, you know, I say, I always say three families. Mm. I have a work family, my immediate family, which I saw my wife. Uh, Hi, Jinsu. In case you were watching, <laughs> uh, my, oh, she's my, watching. She's watching. Uh, the, to, to my, uh, to my, my, to my boys. Um, but then my other my, my family with my work family mm. and my work. My another family is bites, mm. and and I mean it. It's uh, it's not about being recognized as a surgeon or being recognized, but it's to me bites hold more meaning when we're together. Um, mm. We joked around earlier saying, you know, when Bites Institute do something, we all gather together and we really support each other. Like, um, like for example, Jeff, who was a speaker earlier before me, when we went to uh, speak at the New York Symposium, uh, like, and then when we went to Romania to speak together, you know, it's a, it's a very good experience where we can actually support each other and actually and help us help each other grow, not only as a clinician or educator, but as an individual. And, to become a more mature person. Mm-hmm. I really experienced that through Bites Institute. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that I, I felt that when I was going through the uh, New York Symposium and the Bites Institute's and other curriculums. Mm-hmm. And as a as an educator, I also helps me to become a better clinician. So to me, Bites Institute means a family where I help you grow as a bigger person and a better mature individual, mm-hmm. and also as a clinician as well. And 
going forward, and I'm, and I'm at least from my perspective, I'm recognizing that there's more people ha having a taste of Bison Institute, and and the biggest part was the New York Symposium, where a lot of people from different parts of the country, of the world, um, recognized us and it's uh, appreciated us. Like for example. Um, Dr. Wilson and I went to uh, South Africa. He's a big periodontist, and he also talked about our philosophy and how he appreciated our philosophy. And to me, that's how Bites comes to me as a family and a group where uh, we encourage each other to grow as a better person. And that's how I see it. Thank Not you. a child. <laughs> no, I think... Um... I can I totally uh, understand that, and I, I also too believe that without my commitment to Bison Institute, um, and I, I always think that you know it's so hard to run Bison Institute and my clinic at the same time. There were many times I thought about giving it up, but now I look back as you know what, I must not give up because without Bison Institute, I would not be the type of clinician I am today. Right, mm -hmm. and I think Bison's always put the truth before anything, mm -hmm. right? And when we have a true goal, uh, aiming at that truth and, and and sharing the true knowledge to whoever they may be, I think that's who we are, mm -hmm. and that kept us uh, honest and humble. I think mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. So uh, yeah, thanks for uh, you know coming after your hard day work. <laughs> Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes I think uh, we take you for granted because you are local here. You're like my younger brother. <laughs> um, but absolutely, we respect you as a clinician and educator. I just oh, want <laughs> to take this moment to appreciate you and let you know that. Right. Thank you. So um, once again, everybody, thanks for joining us uh, on Thursday. Uh, evening our 20 year anniversary it means a lot um yeah and like i said uh this will be going into our youtube platform where it will be a lot more active uh and a lot of uh, great things to come in the new year as well and i think uh, next year um we will we are going to have uh, several more uh, our faculty guests come over and they're going to share their story and their journey with my sister and David, who's our next uh, episode four? I think it is Scott. Oh, Scott, Scott Dom. Our <laughs> latest uh, member. Okay. Do we have a poster or something? <laughs> He's looking. Uh, it'll be okay. coming up after this. We're going to so. put it in. We're going to put it somewhere. Okay, so it's going to be Scott. Scott Jung is our latest uh, faculty member. And yeah, I think his topic is going to be 3D printing. It'll be okay. very exciting because just yeah. to tell you, what he does, at least from what I see, his 3D printing and how he incorporates his practice with the internal scanner yeah. and printers. Yeah. It's very, it's like, very, very intriguing. Very like, creative. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I... Yeah. I think it'll be to, interesting. I'm looking forward to it because I'm hoping yeah. to incorporate 3D printing as well. So yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So Scott's gonna you know share some of his uh, um, his knowledge and 3D printing, and I think that'll be a lot, a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, the verification for those who join us live, you are entitled to earn uh, one CE credit of AGD. Okay, AGD CE credit. And the verification code was bytes yeah, twenty. Was bytes twenty. S H Denture. SH Denture. Oh, Sang oh, Sangwoham Denture. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Bytes 20 SH Denture. There you go. Take a snapshot of that and then you can use that code to earn yourself a AGD 1CE credit. Okay. So, once again, everybody, okay, we thank you so much for all your support and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>